Hi, uh, this is the .NET Core Basic Tutorial Part 3. And in this video, I will discuss about identity authentication implementation on SP.NET Core. SP.NET Core Identity Framework is a uh, user to implement phone authentication. SP.NET Core Identity is a system for creating and maintaining user login. You can uh, sign in and sign out user, reset their password, log out user, and implement multi-factor authentication. And uh, it typically configured using a uh, SQL Server database to store user name, password, and profile data. In this tutorial, I will going to uh, use the, this uh, program SQL as our database. And I will show you how to use the SP.NET Core Identity to add the functionality to register, login, and log out a uh, user. You can follow around the tutorial or just uh, click on the timestamp below to jump to the topic you write. So let's uh, start uh, with installing the identity uh, application program interface. We need to uh, install the following package: Microsoft SP.NET Core Identity in, in Entity Framework uh, Core, uh, Microsoft SP SP.NET Core dot Identity UR, and the Entity Framework Core dot Tools. Uh, we need this one to generate the Entity Framework Core migration. And finally, it's a uh, MPG SQL dot entity framework called Progress SQL because we're going to use this uh, Progress SQL uh, to be our database. So now uh, let us install this packet in our project. So let's uh, uh, create a new project. And select this uh, SP .NET Core web application. Click on the next button and click on this uh, create button select the web application model build controller and make sure that the authentication is uh, set to the no authentication uh, you can change this one to uh, individual user account or what or school account or window authentication but in this tutorial i'm going to use the no authentication i don't want to use the default setting from the system i want to create the authentication from manually so you just uh, set to the no authentication Next, click on this uh, create button and to let the system uh, prepare to create in this uh, necessary folder and file in our project. And let's uh, check uh, the packets that have been installed by default. So go over, open up this uh, depend, uh, dependency. And you can see that we don't have uh, any packets uh, inside under this uh, dependency. So one way to install all these uh, dependency is to go to this, uh, uh, the tool, uh, Select this Nugget Packet Manager and go to the Manage uh, Nugget uh, Packet to install it from the internet. But another way is uh, you can uh, uh, create the script folder item by click on this uh, project name and right click the project name, select the add, but, uh, select the add and choose this uh, new script folder item and select this identity and click on this uh, add button so uh, next uh, click on this uh, button here to uh, select the existing uh, layout path uh, go over this uh, view uh, shader folder and here you have uh, this uh, layout view select this layout view and click on this uh, account uh, login and uh, account uh, register uh, for, because we're going to uh, create this uh, login and uh, register uh, <coughs> authentication and for the data context class uh, you click on this plus button and you can just use this uh, default name but you can change this name I will going to change this name to the uh, press on this a button and for the user class click on this uh, plus uh, button and change this name to something like uh, application user click the add button and click on the this uh, a button again and now it's going to uh, create this uh, uh, identity for you and uh, you also we're going to now it's uh, going to create a folder called the uh, alias uh, with the identity uh, information and at the same time you also will uh, uh, you also will this uh, input the install this uh, package for you over here so after uh, complete this uh, script folder item, 
uh, you can see that you added this uh, areas uh, folder and under this areas folder you have this uh, identity uh, folder and with this uh, identity hosting style file and the data folder and the press folder inside this press folder you have the uh, one, one more folder called account under this account folder you have this uh, login view and this uh, register view or the pass and you have uh, this uh, package uh, installed for you and by default is uh, installed this uh, uh, Microsoft SP Tonic uh, Crawl Identity Entity Framework Crawl and, and ident uh, Identity uh, UR and the uh, SQL Server but because this tutorial we are going to use this uh, program SQL we're not going to use this uh, SQL Server so are we going to delete the, this uh, packet and you also install this uh, uh, Entity Framework Crawl tools uh, for you to uh, generate the Entity Framework Crawl uh, migration but in this tutorial, we are going to use the version uh, 5 or above. So I need to uh, upgrade this uh, version to the latest version. So let's uh, go to this tool and select this uh, Nugget Package Manager and select this uh, Manager Nugget Package for solution. Uh, inside here, you can uh, see that we had the installer. It lists out all the uh, packet that we had uh, an installer. Uh, you can uh, select uh, this one, the core dot two, and select this uh, our project name. And over here, you can see that we have installed the version three point one point one five, but the latest version is the uh, five point zero point nine. I want you to to install this again. And uh, you need to uh, access all the license. So after complete the installation, you had this uh two. Uh, I'll grade to 5.0.9 and uh, next, uh, there's another uh, package that uh, we, we need to install it's called uh, the mpgsql.entityframework called program sql so go to this uh, browse to install it from the internet so you need to have uh, your internet connected so you type the uh, mpg entity framework called program sql it will list out all the, ver the version of this uh, uh, progress sql packet and you can just select the latest version is version 5.0.7 and click on this install button uh, now you have this uh, program SQL uh, packet installed in, into this uh, machine next step is to preparing the database the database connection screen are stored in the uh, app setting.json file and by default you have to set out this uh, connection screen uh, with the setting pointing to the SQL server, but because we are going to use this uh, program SQL server, so I'm going to change the setting over here to uh, uh, I'm going to change the setting for our program SQL server database. So if you still remember in our the previous uh, tutorial, I show you uh, how to set out this uh, database and server, and we have set out one uh, server called Potato with the database also called Potato. So the server is uh we can use can just type the local host uh, with the port equal to the five three five four three two and the data base equal to the potato and the user ID also the potato and the pass password is also equal to potato. And uh, this uh, auto DB con and this DB context, we need to include this DB context into our identity hosting startup file. So click on this uh, startup file, and under this configure, you can see that uh, by default is uh, using this uh, SQL servers, and now it's a uh, with this uh, error because I have delete out this the uh, SQL ser server packets. So we need to change this one to the our mpg sql so we had a uh, completed this uh, setting over here next we're going to uh, do this uh, migration open up this uh, the console to from the nugget packet manager we select this uh, packet manager con console and now we can uh, type this uh, uh, add my migration let's say the uh, version one when we uh, press this enter key you are going to create this uh, migration folder for us uh, migration folder 
with this uh, migration of NAND, we just now we NAND is the V1. So inside this file, we have all this uh, our uh, data model information, like this uh, ID, user NAND, email, all this. Uh, this uh, object we're going to be uh, later on we're going to push uh, this uh, information into our program SQL database. So let's check on our database in the, this uh, program SQL. Under this uh, potato database, we have this uh, schema. And under this schema, we have the table. Uh, right now, we don't have uh, any table yet. So go back to the uh, go back here and open out this uh, packet manager console again. And this time, I will write this. Uh, I will type the uh, outdate that's database and uh, you can uh, provide the name or your migration or you can uh, just uh, type update that's database you are going to push the latest uh, migration into our database so when I press on this uh, enter key the uh, build success you go back to the your database here and you refresh your database and you can see that you had uh, all this uh, table created by this uh, created from this uh, migration and inside here you can uh, check on this uh, sp net user table by right click and select this uh, view edit data or rows and you have this uh, id username or you can uh, open up this uh, error and you select on this uh, colon and this is all the uh, all the colon or all the input view from the migration for example uh, now we for example you need to uh, uh, make some change on your on the model for example I want to add a sun uh, some model here so I go to the I go to the areas and inside this identity you go to the data and you select this uh, application user so and here you can uh, set out the additional field to create this uh, additional field you type the uh, first uh, personal personal data and followed by the colon and you need to uh, provide the type name uh, is, this one for example is a string so we type, I type the character variant and I also need to provide the rank which is 100 and you, there's a sun error over here you need to hover your mouse over here and uh, insert the packet by select this uh, using system data annotation schema and uh, next you need to provide this uh, object with the type of stream for example I want to uh, I want to have this uh, name colon in our table so I type it, use type skip, get and set so now you, you had uh, added a new uh, object into this uh, model so next we, you need to include this in, into your migration <coughs> so you have to go to this uh, to open out this uh, console again and type the migration with a different name for example we said enter uh, name and press the enter key again so after that you can uh, push this uh, migration into the database to update the data our table in the database by typing this uh, update database press the enter key so after done you go go to your database the table here and you refresh this uh, table and you will see that this uh, name uh, colon have been uh, added to our table here so this is the way how we can uh, update our uh, database uh, table using this uh, migration let's say you want to go back to the period uh, status without this uh, uh, the name uh, item or inside our table you can uh, do it uh, by typing in uh, this uh, uh, outdate data followed by the version for example version 1 here inside our migration we had this uh, we had two uh, 
two migration. One is the version one and one is the one that we added the name. So you want, you want to go back to this uh, uh, B1 uh, migration, you can uh, you can type the out that that's the tab that's B1 and press the enter key. And after the finish, you can uh, go back to your ta uh, your database table here. And as you can see, if I refresh this table, it will uh, go back to the B1 migration. So we are this uh, name uh, colon. So this is the, the way that we are using the migration in the entity framework. You after you are change uh, out there this uh, database back to the B, uh, B1. If you want to remove this uh, migration, uh, you can go back to, to this uh, console here and type a uh, type a uh, remote dash migration, and I uh, press this uh, enter key, and it it will going to uh, remove out this uh, migration enter name from your migration folder. So as as you can see that it's, it said that uh, removing the migration of this one and done and let's uh, go back to this uh, folder here and you can see inside this uh, migration folder we only uh, read behind this uh, migration b1 uh, next uh, is the authentication uh, middleware let's uh, set out this uh, authentication middleware so you need to select this uh, start out uh, file here we need to uh, uh, input this uh, user authentication before the use endpoint just uh, before this uh, use endpoint, you need to add uh, this authentication by typing the application top uh, use your authentication. Uh, next, we need to set out the register pass. To set out this uh, register pass, you need to go to the, the again in the start uh, file here. Uh, under this uh, configure service, you need to add uh, this. Uh, Add a register pass to a service by typing the service dot add pass, and you need to go down to the endpoint here and add another endpoint called a map endpoint called a map a register pass. This uh mess a uh, register press and the and the add a uh, register press is to allow a uh, web application to uh, render the register press. Otherwise, we cannot open the register press in the browser. Next, uh, we need to uh, configure the register layout. There's two uh, register layout to configure. One is our main layout. Another one is the uh, authentication layout. In the main layout, we want to display the parser view. The Low in partial view when the user click on this uh, register the register uh, content view will uh, display out and when click on the low in the low in uh, uh, content view will display out in this uh, main layer another another uh, configuration we need to do is in the authentication layout we need to uh, uh, modify the the the, the file uh, inside this uh, authentication layout dot html and the the purpose of this uh, layout is to let you have a better view. For example, when uh, you click on this uh, register, it's going to uh, uh, display out uh, another uh, a window. Actually, this window containing this uh, uh, authentication uh, layout uh, view. So inside here, you also have this uh, login and log uh, register. You click on the register, it's going, going to uh, display out uh, this uh, register uh, contain view inside this. Uh, our pop-up window and you click on this uh, login and the login uh, content view is going to display out for you so this is the two setting that we are going to do uh, now uh, we back to our uh, code editor here and let us uh, run this uh, program and you can see that uh, we don't have this uh, register uh, and the login menu back to the code and our our main layout is lo 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 our main layout is located in the this uh, view folder and under this the uh, share folder, this is our uh, layout, and we have a, a low in parser uh, view, and this file is uh, created by the system during you add this uh, identity into the uh, this uh, project. So inside this uh, low in parser view, 
you have uh, two content over here. One is uh, after you sign into the system and one is uh, before you sign into the system or you log out from the system. And the content is uh, before you sign into the system, it's, uh, it, it will uh, uh, display out this uh, register and the login uh, item. And after you sign in, it will uh, display out this uh, hello uh, message with this, the user uh, name. So let uh, so we need to uh, include this uh, login partial into our layout. So to include this uh, uh, login partial into our layout, we 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 go to this uh, header here and somewhere around the our home below the home in the privacy uh, menu. Here we create another another uh, uh, deep uh, object and we use use this uh, partial uh, tab and name attribute is uh, equal to the name of this uh, uh, partial view and after we include this uh, this line into in, inside this uh, layout and we run this uh, system again and uh, now and this time you have this uh, register and the login menu you click on this uh, register menu you are going to uh, display out this uh, register menu for you and this uh, register pass is this register view is uh, created by the system during during you create this uh, identity. And you create on this uh, login and go to show you this uh, login uh, view. Uh, let's key in some uh, data and register this data to our database. And click the register button. And you are uh, uh, logged into this system, and you, you can see that uh, it display out this. Uh, um, message hello to the, your email. This means you already uh, loaded into this system. And let's go to the, our database. And let's uh, re uh, refresh this uh, data. And you can see that our uh, data already uh, set into this uh, table with the username is your email address and the, your password is uh, being uh, in, inside this uh, hash format. So nobody can uh, see your password. It's Okay, now let me on the code here, and this time uh, I want to uh, I want this uh, I want this uh, register view content view and the uh, login content view to be dis displayed in the uh, uh, something look like a pop-up window. So you need to do some uh, configuration inside this. Uh, uh, you go to this uh, areas uh, under this page. You have this uh, authentication layout, and. We don't have this uh, layout uh, reference uh, in this uh, register uh, uh, content view here. So if uh, you you put in this uh, layout equal to the authentication uh, layout, if I include this line inside this uh, content uh, uh, inside this uh, register content view, if I now I run this uh, system again. And uh, if at uh, this time I uh, click on this uh, register, and you will see that it gives you the error message because uh, we need to uh, assign this. The uh, we need to render this uh, script in, uh, to to the past. So we we haven't uh, do any configuration in this uh, auto in this uh, authentication layout. So let's go back to the this copy. Yeah? So you you need to put in this. Uh, you need to go back to here and you need to put in uh, uh, this uh, session script this uh, session is allow you to add uh, something in the view which uh, will be added in the layout so inside here you need to type the render session And uh, you need to make a reference to our uh, main layout. After you are uh, uh, adding this uh, line into this uh, 
uh, authentication layout so you you run this uh, system again and you click on this uh, register and it will uh, display out this uh, uh, register content view inside the inside the authentication layout uh, now uh, our register our register content view is going to display the F here for example you can uh, uh let me uh delete out all this uh let me put uh write something uh say uh this is uh layout and let me uh, run this uh, system again uh let click on this uh, register uh item and you can see that our message this is the uh, authentication layout was uh, displayed out so it's mean uh, we are inside this uh, authentication layout So you can uh, make this uh, layout look uh, better by using the bootstrap. And you put uh, your content uh, below here. And this uh, container go in, into this uh, render body method. So after you uh, uh, write out this uh, uh, the HTML uh, script, you can uh, run this uh, system again. And uh, let create all this uh, register item. And you, you can see that you had a uh, 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 styling uh, on top here, and you had this uh, sign uh, sign out. Uh, Item two, and you click on this sign. It bring you to the login, and you click on the sign up. You you will uh, go over here because we haven't uh, made any. Uh, we haven't uh, refer the this uh authentication layout into this uh, login uh, content view. So when you click on this uh, login, you will uh, go into this uh, our main layout. Uh, this line of this call over here, uh, load in and load out tab, whether display out this just now the load in and the load out item inside this uh, this uh, auto ticket layout. So let's go to this uh, load in here, load in content view, and you put in this uh, layout into uh, equal to this uh, uh, auto uh, layout, and you run this uh, system again. And uh, this time you click on this register, you go over here and you click on this uh, login, you also will go into our authentication uh, layout. And you click on this uh, sign up, sign in. And uh, another thing you can do is uh, you can uh, put in the logo uh, icon, for example the user icon. So you can get this icon from the uh, bootstrap. Okay, you go to this uh, bootstrap icon and you go to this bootstrap icon homepage. And you can uh, go down here, type in uh, in the filter here. You can type in the the keyword. Let's say the user. It will give you the user icon. For example, you want this, or for example, if you want this uh, icon, you can click on the, this icon here, and you can copy the HTML uh, script here by click on this uh, I, uh button. Next, you can uh, go back. Uh, below this uh, session, you can uh, just press or press this call over here. And you can change the width and the height, height to uh, a little bit bigger, for example, 160. And let's copy this and go to the register content view and press this uh, course over here. And let's uh, uh, run this up system again. And let's uh, click on this uh, register icon and you have this uh, icon uh, in your uh, register view and the login in this way of course uh, you can adjust uh, maybe you can release all these messages if you don't want I think uh, that's all for the, this uh, uh, basic tutorial on this uh, how to uh, create this uh, identity in the sp.net core mbc uh, thank you and see you again